Hi folks, uh, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, a lengthy video on annihilationism. Uh, so we're going to look at the doctrine of annihilationism, which is the idea that there is no hell and that we're just annihilated, we're dead and that's it. Um, I don't believe this doctrine, I think it's heresy. And uh, it's, a, it's a doctrine that's spreading, it's like gangrene, it's like poison, and it's spreading throughout the church. And uh, I, I just feel that we need to be aware of that and we need to look into it. So, so without further ado, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com and on my website there's loads of good material. And also you can go on my Facebook where there's loads of good Bible teachers on there. And on Twitter, there's lots of good material for apologetics. So I hope this series is a blessing to you and a help to you and an encouragement to you. It's going to be a lengthy video. So uh, it's going to be for at least an hour, maybe longer. And there's going to be a lot of scholarship involved. So you need to get your Bible out. You need to do a bit of studying, a bit of preparation, uh, etc. Um, okay, so I'm going to pray. I'll just have a cup of coffee. I'm just drinking coffee. So this is going to be quite in depth, all right? It's going to be very, very in depth. Um, I've spent many, many hours studying this the last couple of days. Um, and I've read a lot of material. And so I just ask that you sort of study and drink in what I'm saying and, and appropriate it because it will be a help to you. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today and we acknowledge, O oh Lord, our sin. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, our need of you. And Lord, we confess our failure and sin. We acknowledge our need of your mercies, our need of your grace. We ask, O oh God, for your forgiveness today. And Father, we ask that you might bless this study today. The Father, you might be in, in every aspect of it, that you might bless it to people's lives. The Father, they might be encouraged, that they might be strengthened, they might be helped, and they might be built up in their faith. I ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. May your Holy Spirit be in these words, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So... I want to just look, before we get into annihilationism, I want to bring us to a few passages which I've mentioned before, but I think is really important. And if you go to Jude, the book of Jude, all right, and it says in Jude chapter, uh, verse 4, For there are certain men crept in on the words who were before of old, ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So there are these men that have crept in and, and they're turning the grace of God into lasciviousness that, you know, people can do whatever they want. Then if you turn to uh, Galatians chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him who has called you into the grace of Christ, into another gospel, which is not another, but there be there some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So there are these people that are brought in a false gospel and they're to be cursed because they're denying the gospel. Then if you turn to 2 Timothy, Chapter 3, verse 1, Knowing also that in the last days perilous time will come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, having a form of godliness but denying its power, ever learning and ever able. And so in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, you know, people are just abandoning the faith. Right? So, 
we're in a time of apostasy today. You know, make no bones about it. There are hordes of people in the church today who are turning away from the simplicity of the gospel. Okay, so when someone comes along with a new teaching or who seems very, very persuasive with the new teaching, you've got to be very, very wise and discerning because you're going to be taken in by these people. Now, I've studied these annihilationists. I've studied uh, one of the most able scholars in annihilationism is Dr. Fudge, Edward Fudge. And he's a brilliant scholar and he's written a 500 page book. I've not read the 500 page book, but I've listened to his lecture that gives an outline of his book. And um, he's a brilliant scholar and he's a brilliant, brilliant lecturer and a brilliant debater. And when you listen to him, it can be very convincing. And then on the other hand, there's a, a, another one guy called, I think, Chris Date. And he's a brilliant debater. And he has a website where there's loads of scholars on there. And if you uh, interact with this gentleman, you will be persuaded because he's quite a powerful debater. But even though all these people are great scholars, great debaters, they are teaching heresy. The other thing as well is these debaters present themselves as evangelical. They come across as sound evangelical, but just different on the issue of hell. And so they're able to ingratiate themselves upon the, the church, because then the evangelical church sees them as no different from them. So they'll use language like we are Calvinist, or we're conservative evangelical, or we believe in penal substitutionary atonement, or we, we agree with you on inerrancy of scripture, etc. They will use our language but they don't believe the same thing because hell and annihilationism are not the same. Annihilationism is a, is a, a rank heresy of serious magnitude. The third issue as well is evangelical scholars and preachers, and I'll give some examples. For example, I, I, I respect Bible Thumping Wingnut, but on his show, uh, Lenny was debating uh, Mr. Date and gave him the right hand of fellowship, said he was a brother in Christ. Uh, Phil Fernandez, uh, another guy who I respect, a great apologist, did the same with Mr. Date. And uh, the woman apologist has done the same with Mr. Date. Given the impression that those who don't believe in hell, but who believe in annihilationism, they are evangelical as well, and we are together in fellowship and this is totally 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 wrong Paul clearly states cursed is anyone who preaches not the gospel and annihilationism isn't the gospel annihilationism undermines the gospel it attacks some of the core doctrines of the gospel we're going to get into later on how annihilationism undermines the deity of Christ, which the annihilationists don't really want to talk about. But yet there are evangelicals who, evangelical leaders who have cozied up to these annihilationists, who now are, have changed their word annihilationism to brand their name conditional uh, immortality. So they branded themselves, they re keep rebranding themselves to ingratiate themselves to the evangelical people. And the sad thing is, is that we're lacking leadership, strong, biblical, vibrant leadership that will stand up against a heresy, fundamental heresy, fundamental things that are very, very dangerous to tamper with. You know, we, we lack the leadership, we are lacking the strong leadership that will stand up against the, for the fundamentals and call people out for their heresy. I'm not into these people who are looking for heresies everywhere. I, I don't agree with that. There are the, there's a certain type of person that they will cause arguments 
about the colour of the paint in the church and they will say you're Roman Catholic because you've got red paint or you know they, in other words they're so suspicious and so looking for arguments they'll argue about anything and I don't agree with that that's not biblical but in Galatians chapter 1 it says cursed is anyone who preaches not the gospel there's many warnings in the Bible that there will be false teachers false prophets and we have to be wary and discerning about who is teaching and what they are teaching and when an fundamental is attacked we have to be very very wary and we can't call that brother or sister um, in public we cannot give them the right hand of fellowship we might, in private we can talk to them but in public we can't give them the right hand of fellowship if they are knowingly actively promoting heresy we can't and yet there are leaders today evangelical leaders that are giving these annihilation, annihilationist stroke conditional immortalities basically these heretics they're giving these people the right hand of fellowship and it's totally wrong and what it will lead to which we'll get into later what it will lead to is the secularization of the church for example the Church of England in the 1990s declared categorically that, uh, that hell was not biblical and that annihilationism is, is the biblical model. The Church of England in England is in a total mess. It is caved in on gay marriage, it is caving in on all sorts of fronts. Why? Because they gave up a fundamental doctrine, the doctrine of hell. When you start to meddle with fundamentals, the whole thing collapses. And you can see that with the mainline denominations when they fiddle about with the fundamental doctrines of the Bible. So evangelicals that are um, cozying up to these annihilationists and giving them the right hand of fellowship, you're committing a great sin and a great evil because you are corrupting, you are helping to further the corruption of the church. If you let a little uh, parasite into your body, then that parasite will eat away at your body and will grow and grow and grow until you have gangrene in your arm. And if you don't cut off your arm, you're going to get poisoned in the rest of your body. And if you don't get cut off there, you're going to die. And that's what's happening with annihilationism. Not only annihilationism, but with other fundamental doctrines that are being assaulted, like inerrancy, but we're sticking to annihilationism at the moment. But that's what will happen with annihilationism. It's only another step of undermining God's people. Okay. So let's, without further ado, let's get on with the main study now. One more thing as well. Um, there's a, another thing I wanted to say. Yeah. Let us be spiritual. Let's make sure that the Holy Spirit teaches us. So, it says... Uh, In 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 2, it says, verse 10, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, ye the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in them, even so the things knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So we can't fully understand scripture unless we're willing to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. So we need the Holy Spirit to guide us. We can't just look at this rationally. 
okay? This doctrine of annihilationism and the doctrine of hell, we can't look at these just on a purely rational basis. We've got to look at it from the scripture and allow the Holy Spirit to, to teach us, okay? So we need to let the Holy Spirit guide us, the Holy Spirit teach us, and we need to be grounded in what the Bible teaches. Okay? And this is important because there are people today who will say, well, Bertrand Russell couldn't become a Christian because he thought hell was horrible. You have theologians like uh, Clark Pinnock who say that uh, a God who teach, uh, Christians who believe in hell and teach hell is just a monstrous doctrine. Uh, people like John Wayne would say that. People like John Stott. Um, on top of that, you have people like Anthony Flew, who was an atheist, became a deist, and, and then said he couldn't become a Christian because he didn't believe in the doctrine of hell. And there are many people out there who will say, well, you know, how can God send people to hell? Uh, they sinned for 70 years, and yet they're going to hell for eternity. It doesn't seem right. So all these are human rationalistic arguments. And you have to make a decision. Are you going to go with humanistic rational arguments or are you going to go with the Spirit of God teaching you from the Word of God? This is very important. Very, very important. Are you going to stand on the Word of God? If there is no God, let's just get this right. If there is no God and if Christianity is not true, then what are you going to believe? If you believe that there is no God, then there's no right and wrong. You're just dust in the edge of the universe. So being a, uh, an atheist doesn't get you anywhere. If you're going to be a Muslim, the Muslims build on the New Testament and Old Testament. They deny that Christ died and rose again. We have tons of evidence to show that Christ died and evidence to show that Jesus rose again. So Islam can't be true. And uh, are you going to go for Mormonism or Jehovah's Witness? They're cults. So let's get it right. There's only one way to go, either we submit to the Word of God and allow the Spirit of God to guide us, or we go by human reason and rationalism. And if we do that, you're going to have to reject the Bible. Because the Bible teaches hell. But if you reject the Bible, where are you going to go? You're not going to go anywhere, because every system that you're going to go for is going to be shown to be false. And Christianity is the truth. So whether you like it or not, you've got to come to the Bible and submit to the Bible and allow the Spirit of God to teach you through the Bible. That's the only option. Okay? And I did this, I said that little bit for those Christians or people who are backslidden because of the doctrine of hell. Because you've thought about the doctrine of hell and you've thought to yourself, it's, it's unjust. And so the, you've turned away from the Christian faith. You, you do believe in Jesus. But now your faith is, is kind of going because of this doctrine of hell. Uh, and you, 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 you just can't reconcile being a Christian and believing in that doctrine. But you need to realise that you're making choices that are even worse than the rejection of the Christian faith. You're going into areas that cannot be substantiated intellectually in any shape or form. So you've got to come back to the Bible and read the Bible afresh. The next issue about annihilations, and we're going to get into the exegesis and all the rest of it in a minute. But the next issue with annihilation is that the debaters and the scholars like Fudge and uh, Date will tell you that they just want to follow the Bible, that they're not pressured by culture. But this annihilationism has only gathered pace the last 30 years. We're going to go into it in a little bit more detail. But it's only the last 30, 40 years annihilationism has flourished. Okay? Um, why? Because we're living in a time of secularism, we're living in a time of human reason, where men have exalted themselves above the Bible. And um, the annihilationists will get into it, will say, well, the annihilationism is throughout, has been throughout the history of the church, but the reality is, if you look at the history, and we'll look at that in, the, in, a, few, in, a, in a bit, the fact of the matter is that annihilationism, uh, in terms of being a massive movement 
It's only the last 30, 40 years. It's never been able to get a grip of the church. It's only recently that it's began to get a grip amongst evangelical scholars and uh, pastors in a big way, who I would say are no more evangelical if they're not teaching uh, the, 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 the fundamentals of the Christian faith. So th this is just a preamble to... So I have my notes here and we're going to go through my notes. I... I listened to, first of all, uh, in my studies, I listened to a lecture by Edward Fudge. Um, now, Edward Fudge uh, wrote a book. Um, and I'm going to give you the... This is off the top of my head. I'm going to give you the basic argument that Fudge would use and what annihilation is used. So, so we're, what we're doing here now, we're going to present their argument for annihilationism, right? And I'm going to do it fairly and I'm going to do it how they do it, okay? So this is mainly how Fudge does it, but uh, uh, other annihilationists get the general methodology and ideas of how to tackle the topic from Fudge. Fudge wrote a 500 page book if you're going to engage with this topic, you need to have some idea of Fudge, Edward Fudge, because he's one of the main scholars. So I listened to a lecture of his, and then I watched a debate between him and a scholar uh, from Biola. Um, so I think... Um, I just have to do it off the top of my head. So, um, Fudge's argument is, is basically, we go to Psalm 6. So this is the annihilationist argument, okay, from the scholar Fudge. And you can go to his website and go and listen to his lectures. So basically, Fudge will tell you, it, it doesn't matter what, ecclesiastical tradition you come from it doesn't matter how you look at things let's all look at it from the Bible's perspective so this is Fudge's kind of way of tackling the situation so now you listen to Fudge and you think this sounds very good he wants to be a man of the Bible I, I, I'll listen to him so then he'll take you to many many passages in the Old Testament um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do because I have uh, more notes uh, on fudge and I want to get those notes so what I'll do is I'll stop here and um, I'm going to get my notes so we're going to carry on the video to another video so that was an introduction to some preliminary issues now we're going to get into the scholarship in the next video we're going to look at one of the main scholars on annihilationism and we're going to look at what he says faithfully not not uh, straw man it and then we're going to get into the scholarship of critiquing Fudge and, and, and where he's at. And that will help you to understand how to deal with this doctrine, uh, this, this heretical doctrine. Okay, So that's what I'm going to do because I, I want to make sure it's done in a proper scholarly way. Okay, God bless you. See you in the next video. So God bless you.